So right behind me is the TCL 6 Series 8K TV. It's a mini LED and we're gonna game on it. Hey guys, Thunder E here. Thank you for joining us on the channel. And if you're watching for the very first time, hit that subscribe button to watch more videos like this. And I also wanna give a big thanks to all our subscribers for helping us get to 400K. Appreciate all the support. Hopefully you enjoy more videos like this from us on the channel. All right, let's cut to the chase. That's the TCL uh, 6 Series 8K TV. It is a lovely looking TV and also probably one of the cost, most cost effective 8K TVs out there. That's a 65 inch. It's priced roughly around uh, $1,999, so $2,000. For an 8K TV 65 inch, that is actually one of the best prices you find out there on the market. You can get a 75 for about $2,500, $2,700. That being said though, this TV comes with a ton of features, so don't think you're being skimped out. First off, it has 240 dimming zones, so it has a lot of dimming zones. It's a mini LED TV, so it's a thicker TV in all respects. Now, they've used that thickness to its advantage and added a bunch of things to this TV. So, 8K60, 4K120, so Xbox, Series X, PlayStation 5 fans, this is for you right here. You've also got, um, uh, a billion colors, you've got you know, light color volume, which we'll talk about in a second with this TV, but you've also got some really good sound. They have a built-in soundbar at the back of the TV, which I was surprised to hear how good it was. So why don't you guys just listen for yourself and then we'll talk. So that was pretty good, right? Especially just um, hitting almost close to about 50% volume, which is nice to see. So you don't necessarily have to get a soundbar unless you want to get that really full cinematic feel. It supports Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. So that also is really nice, especially when you go on things like Netflix, where you have Dolby Vision support uh, and all the apps it does support. We'll get to all that in a second, but let's jump to what we care about. Gaming, I have my, I have my PlayStation 5 connected and my Xbox Series X. Both of them come about 4K 120. The Xbox supports HDR gaming as well, so you see the HDR sign pop up whenever you play on the Xbox, which is pretty cool, right? Now, the thing about I like about this TV is a couple of things. So, number one, it's got THX uh, gaming uh, certification, which means it supports 4K 120. I'm not sure what all the, all, if it supports all the other aspects like VR and the rest of them, but I know it supports some. Uh, forgive me for that. But I will say though, in terms of playing on this TV though, it feels good and it feels really natural. Uh, in terms of just how it looks, it looks really good. Forza Horizon 5 looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, the games look good. Ghost of Tsushima looks absolutely gorgeous on this, Spider-Man. Any game you play, be it on your Xbox Series X or your PlayStation 5, will look sharp and vibrant. That color volume definitely shows while you're sitting in front of the TV and you start playing. Now, when you turn in your console, the THX gaming certification or THX gaming mode turns on. It automatically switches to game mode, so you don't have to do anything. Uh, the one thing you can do, though, is you can switch between the uh, the picture outlook, so the picture settings. You, it, it usually comes up as uh, warm. You can change it to cool or normal, depending on how you want it to look. But the gameplay experience is good. I haven't noticed anything to slow down the experience, and I really like it. So that part I do like. I will say though, when you're gaming, if you're gaming off the side or if you're viewing the TV off the side, that's where you notice that the color volume does dip down uh, and is not as sharp as being, of course, center focused on the TV. If you're either viewing towards the right hand side or left hand side, you can clearly see that, yes, the color volume is less. So that's part that, that's a part that I wish and I hope they improve as they move forward with this TV. Now, speaking of also gaming in 8K or at least on the 8K display, I wanted to see how the Nintendo Switch handle, and the Switch does a really good job on this TV because uh, it doesn't look like it's highly pixelated. You know, the Switch is 720p on the display. I think it outputs 1080p to your TV. This is an 8K display, and I, I mean, I actually liked what I saw. Playing Smash Brothers was great. Watching Daniel play Smash Brothers looked really good on this TV. No complaints. 
So let's jump into that software. Now it's powered by Roku, which basically powers the operating system for this TV. And I'm not the biggest Roku fan. I will say this continually. I like what they do, but I think their, um, their OS or the UI needs, to, needs a modern uplift. Now, one thing about it though, is that it does pack a lot of applications and application support. So if you're a Roku user, you know this quite well, you've got access to almost everything you want to. Now you also have access through the remote control and this remote control has a much more premium look to it. It's a two-tone silver look. You've got a simple button layout. You've got your volume and your mute buttons on the side, very standard Roku thing. Um, and uh, you also have quick access to Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, and Apple TV. So technically the big boys in the streaming game. You know, no Amazon here though, even though they're one of the largest. But you do have access to those as well, which is pretty nice. Now you can also use the Roku app as well uh, to access content directly on there. Uh, so that gives you more viewing real estate from just the TV to your phone. And you can control the TV with the remote in case for whatever reason, this is stuck underneath the couch or something like that. So that aspect is really, really nice. Now, the one thing I'll say with the remote though is I wish there was a specific button for me to cycle through uh, previous um, um, input options. So for instance, I've got my PlayStation and I kind of want to cycle to my Xbox. There's nothing on here. So I've got to hit the home button to go back and then I've got to go to Xbox. So that's a couple of steps that I don't necessarily want to do, but it's steps that are actually there. Um, just. You see my Xbox is not on, so I have to turn that on, but there's uh, options that I don't want to actually take to actually do that. So you have that there. So that is something that I would like to see change, but honestly, I do like this TV. I think it's really solid. The price point is good. It's not the best AK TV I've seen, but I like what they're giving to consumers. And I think a lot of people like it. So if you guys have any questions, or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, uh, and always enjoy your entertainment.